Hi, this is Diana from Creative Watch. Today I'm going to show you how you can remove something that is attached to your character, like a weapon or in this case, part of an armor. I'd like to give a shout out to David Williams who helped me troubleshoot some of the Maya issues among other things. He also has a great YouTube channel with useful Unreal tutorials. I'll post a link in the details, so check it out. As always in Unreal, there are many ways to do things. I'll be showing you three solutions. The simplest method is to just create a transparent material using assignments that are already there, but sometimes there isn't already an assignment for a specific area. Now, of course, you can still paint like a mask, but at that point, it might be simple to just delete the faces. And I'll show you how to do this using Blender or Maya. Blender seems to save a few extra steps. So let's get started. For this example, I'm just going to be using a Paragon character. You, of course, can use any character you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the blueprint just to see what I'm dealing with. So in the viewport, I can see my whole character. And over on the left-hand side of the components, if I click on Mesh, you can see it selects the whole thing. So let's say I want to just select the legs. If I click on legs, still the whole thing is selected. So how do I remove or hide just part of this character? I'm going to jump into the Skeletal Mesh Editor. And over on the left-hand side, you can see all the materials that have been assigned to your character. Now, if I wanted to hide just the weapon, the sword, a simple way to do that would just be create a transparent material and assigning this. So let's go ahead and create a transparent material. I'm going to jump back into my main viewport in the content browser. I'm going to create a materials folder just to be organized. And inside there, I'm going to right click, select material. I'm going to name it. Transparent. I'm going to jump inside that to open up the material editor. I'm going to dock this. So with the material selected over on the left hand side, I'm going to change the blend mode from opaque to masked. Next in the graph editor, I'm going to right click and search for constant. You could also hit one left click in the graph editor for a shortcut. I'm going to pipe the constant expression into opacity mask. And that's all I really have to do. I'm not changing the parameter since I'm assigning this to the whole material. The last thing I'm going to do is select the material and change the shading model to unlit. Now I've never tested this, but I've been told that it's just a little bit better for performance. If you change it to unlit, remember to apply and save. All right, so now all I have to do is find the material that is assigned to the sword so I can put it, my transparent material in there instead. A simple way to do that is just, if you look at the checkboxes over on the left-hand side, you have two options. One is to select by highlight. So this will show you which material is assigned to which part, or you can select the isolate option, which hides everything else. I like this a little bit better. Once you've found the material that is assigned to that area, just go ahead and find the material that we just created. So here's my transparent material and I'm putting that in there instead. And if I look at my character now, the sword is no longer visible. This is a really easy technique and works great if you have one assignment for a component. In the case of the sword, it was one assignment for that one part of the mesh. But let's say I need to remove part of the armor, which has a material that is assigned to different parts, including what you want to remove. So if I wanted to remove just this shoulder area from the armor, you'd think I could just replace this with my transparent material. So let's try that. And it does disappear, but notice that Everything disappears that lives under that assignment, including the bottom part of that armor piece, which I wanted to keep. So that's not exactly what I wanted. 
So in this case, an option would be to delete the actual faces from the mesh. And I'm going to show you how to do this using Blender and Maya. Let's get started with Blender first. So back in my viewport, go find your, or I'm going to go find my skeletal mesh. I'm going to right click, go to Asset Actions, Export. So I want to export my FBX. I'm going to find my FBX location. Hit Save. This will open up the FBX export options. I usually set it to 2013 or 16. Those seem to be very stable. Hit Export. And now you're ready to move on to Blender. So opening up Blender, I'm going to import my FBX. So File, Import, FBX. And let's see, here it is. And there's my character. It's going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to select the mesh and go to Edit Mode and select my faces and I'm going to grow the selection with control plus and delete faces control plus delete faces same for the back part control delete okay and delete and I think I want this piece gone too, so I'm going to do the same thing again. Just make sure I got all the faces. And there's a little tiny piece here. I want gone too. There we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Looks like I got it all. And I'm still keeping that bottom part of the shoulder armor that I wanted. And I'm ready to export my FBX that I want to bring back into Unreal. So under File and Export, FBX. I'm going to save this into my Blender folder. And name this Blender Export. And then over on the right side, just make sure that you have Armature and Mesh selected. And then on the bottom, under Armature drop-down, make sure you deselect the Add Leaf Bones option. And then hit FBX Export. And now we're done in Blender. So I'm going to minimize this and move back to Unreal. So I made an FBX folder here. I'm going to drag and drop my file into this folder. So in Window Explorer, here is my FBX that I just exported out of Blender. I'm going to drag and drop that in here to Unreal. And this will open up the FBX import options. So it's a good sign when it automatically knows that you're looking to bring in a skeletal mesh. Sometimes this is not selected, and I find that that can be a warning that there might be a problem. But with this selected, now just go find the skeleton that you need for your character. So in this case, I know it's the Kuang skeleton and you're, you'll have to find whatever your skeleton is. And then I always like to set the search location to under root. This will basically make sure that the materials are all hooked up correctly like they were when I started. And then I put in do not create material for the new um, adjusted part of the geo. And this is up to you. And hit import. Okay, I'm okay with those warnings. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to open up the skeletal mesh of the imported FBX. And there he is. And sure enough, that part of the shoulder that I didn't want anymore is now gone. And looks like the materials are all hooked up correctly. And since I selected to do not make a new material, you can see it is now an empty slot. So I know right away that I have to put something in here. And the cool thing is, since I didn't F, you know, adjust anything on the bottom part, the material that was there before should work just fine. So I'm going to go find that. And I think it was this one. Yeah, there you go. OK, so now the part that I didn't like is gone and everything else looks like it's ready to go. Now, I usually like to just run it through a sequencer just to make sure that there isn't any surprises that I didn't anticipate. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to my 
you port. Just gonna throw a sequencer in here. So on the right click, animation, sequencer. I'm gonna bring in my skeletal mesh into the viewport and open up my sequencer. I'm gonna drag and drop my character into the sequencer. And now all I'm gonna do for this quick test is, I don't know, just find an animation clip. And looks like that's all there. Now there is a gap, of course, because I deleted that area out, but it looks like it's moving correctly and there's no obvious surprises. So that is the Blender workflow, and next we'll move on to Maya. We're now going to do it again, but using the Maya workflow. I saved this for last since it does have a few extra steps that need to be followed. So let's go ahead and bring the FBX into Maya. So file, import, and just make sure that the file type is set to FBX and hit import and find your character. And the first thing you want to be aware of is that Maya brings in the FBX with this grouping, which Unreal doesn't like. So if I open this up, you can see there's the, the bones and the mesh are inside. So I'm going to move the bones and the mesh out of the grouping. And then I'm going to go ahead and just delete the original group. So technically now I am ready. One thing to be aware of as well is that if you have a bunch of LODs, that might be conflicting also if you bring the FBX back in. So in, in my case, I actually deleted the, um, all of the LODs and I'm just going to regenerate them. So I have a clean mesh here. But now I'm basically ready to delete the faces that I no longer want. So I'm going to, again, make sure the mesh is selected and I'm going to go to, oops, faces. I'm just going to double click and delete everything that I don't want. So I'll double click and it looks like there's an underside. So I'm deleting that as well. And I want to get rid of this piece too. Otherwise it'll just be floating in the air. And there's a little knob left. Okay. All right, so technically I'm ready to export now. However, if I select the mesh and I look at the layer editor, you'll see that there's all these um, actions that I took. So all these delete actions that I took, it has this history that's gonna be a problem. And if you were to export this, you might get a warning that looks like this, this error, and this will cause you problems. And that's because uh, basically what's happening here is that when you delete the faces, all the vertices IDs change. It's, it's like a new mesh. It's a different mesh. The skin clusters can't understand it anymore. So I want to get rid of this history. And an easy way to do that is just by duplicating your mesh. So I'm just doing a control D. So here's my new one. And if I look at my layer editor now, you can see there's, there's nothing there since I haven't done anything yet, but duplicate it. If I look at the original, again, here are all my inputs. However, this is now a standalone. It's not, you know, the bones aren't, uh, it's not skinned anymore. So I have to rebind it. I'm going to make sure, I'm just going to open this up and make sure that all the bones are selected. So click and shift select. And I'm going to select the new mesh that I made. And then I'm going to make sure that my mode is set to rigging. And I'm going to go to the skin menu and select bind skin option box. I'm going to just keep the default settings, hit apply. And if I take a look now, you can see it added this skin cluster to it. And just to make sure that the weighting and everything is like the original was, I'm going to select the original mesh. And I'm going to shift select the new mesh that I duplicated, go back to skin and copy skin weights option box. Keep the default settings and hit apply. So now the two meshes should be identical. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just delete the original mesh since I don't need that anymore. And again, you can see that this is a clean start, fresh start. But I'm also going to double check that the bones or the skinning is actually working. So I'm just going to select one of the bones and let's just move it or rotate it. And yeah, it looks like the mesh is moving with it. That's what I want. So now I'm ready to export the mesh back into Unreal. 
So I like to just select everything just to make sure. Go to File and Send to Unreal All. And of course, find the location of where you want to save your new FBX. And I always find it confusing because at first it asks for the folder and I not the file name. So select the folder. Hit select and now it asks for the file name. So I'm going to name this Maya Export. All right, and we're done with Maya. So I'm going to minimize this and go back to Unreal. Back in Unreal, I am ready to bring in my Maya export. So I'm going to find the FBX. There it is, Maya export. I'm going to click and drag that into Unreal. I already made the FBX folder. This will open up the FBX import options, which you are now familiar with. And I feel pretty good because Skeletal Mesh is selected. So that's a good sign. And I'm going to go find the skeleton for my character. So that's the Kuang skeleton. And again, I'm going to use the under roots um, material option. So everything should be hooked up. And I, I like the empty slot, but again, that's up to you. Import. Okay, I'm okay with those warnings. Go back into the skeletal mesh. And this looks familiar now. You can see the area that I've deleted is in fact gone. The materials are hooked up. And it is missing the material assignment for the area that I adjusted. So I just need to find this again. Here it is. That looks pretty good. Now, if I was doing this for the first time, I would run it through a sequencer just to make sure everything was okay. But since I already did that, I feel pretty confident that that will work. And that is the Maya workflow. I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you guys for the next tutorial.